Welcome back to the Richard and Judy Book Club in association with WH Smith. And our next book is an absolute cracker right up my street. It's a thriller, it's by Robert Goddard, and it's called Fault Line. It's the most extraordinary family saga, really, um, which takes in the China clay mines in Cornwall um, and sort of takes, spends a long time in the middle in the Capri, beautiful, beautiful um, island off Italy, which uh, is lushly described. The contrast between Cornwall and Capri is amazing. But best of all, and Robert Goddard is here now, best of all, it has this terrific hero. He's only 18, and I love him. I fell in love with him. Jonathan, he's a complete doll. He's, he's clever, and uh, but he's I'll kind of... I'll give a coat. <laughs> he's kind of morally upright, but sort of imaginative and warm as well. Um, and he's the central figure. So how did you come up with him? Did you want to write a story about a young man? Well, naturally, he was modelled on my younger self. Uh, <laughs> and also, I suppose, my older self, since yes, in the course he, of the book, he does... He, does, uh, he, he, he ends up being 60 at the end of yes. the book. Yes, well, that was one of the appeals of the story, really, so that I could um, look at him and, and, and quite a few of the other characters as well over a period of time, mm. over most of their life, in fact, yeah. the changes that brings to him and to others. And uh, he's, he's a bit of an outsider who gets drawn into a family coming from a very small family himself. He gets drawn into this family and uh, little uh, does he anticipate really of all, all the problems that are going to arise from that. This is the Wren, the Wren family. Yes, the Wren family. Very sinister, uh, sa very sinister bunch. <laughs> I'm afraid they are a little. Uh, although apparently at the outset they're merely presiding over a, a genteely decaying China clay business, but in fact there's far more to it than that. Uh, Jonathan's initial interest is essentially romantic, the yeah. beautiful daughter of the family, Vivian. Vivian, Vivian. Yeah. And, uh, So out of his league. Uh, sorry so sorry to say that to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, there again, you've, it's upon the story of my life, but uh, <laughs> um, actually she doesn't stay out of his league no, because, of, uh, because of her own rather, rather, rather strange young brother, Oliver, who, uh, who is playing his own game and uh, he's yeah. ahead of a lot of people. Yeah. And uh, Jonathan gets drawn into it, and over the course of uh, 40 years, really, takes yes, him to get it, to the bottom of this. It's immensely layered, um, and as I say, I mean, the, the, the sort of secrets of this strange family, the Wren family, are continually being revealed, and there are various deaths, and some of them you don't even know at first whether they're natural or not. I mean, it just because... It, it, you, it's you have very to, cleverly written, it's it really very, is. And I love the scenes in Capri, especially in Great Uncle Francis. Now, Great Uncle Francis is a wren, um, but he has a secret, um, and that secret uh, causes him to do something rather terrible to somebody else. And, and what I mean is, I'm sorry to describe it's, it's it like this. It's good of you not to reveal the details. Yes, I know. Part. I don't want to reveal the details. But, but he's a great character. He's absolutely fantastic. And again, poor old Jonathan, who just happens to be there because he's going out with Vivian, the, 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 the beautiful great niece, finds himself ex extraordinarily drawn into the centre of events all the time. And even though the events themselves are quite evil and nasty and horrible, poor old Jonathan tries to do his best by everyone, doesn't he? I think he does, and I think he thinks, as I suppose a lot of us probably think at times, if we just hold this together, we will get through it and come out the other side That's into right. a promising, glowing, beautiful future all in which Vivian and I are yeah. together and the family is happy. And you're always uh, thinking, oh, Jonathan. <laughs> That's what I was thinking all the way through. <laughs> but there's really not any way through, uh, uh, except in the long term. No. How important do you think Cornwall is to the, to the story, that location? Well, I think it's in, certainly in terms of the China Clay District, mm. it's very important. I, I want, I'd wanted to use the China Clay District uh, for quite a while in a, in a novel. Uh, and uh, of course, it's quite an unglamorous counterpoint to the sort of seaside image. Mm. Oh, St. Austell, where, where, where the China Clay industry is. It's, 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 I'd hesitate to say it's a dump because we live quite close to it. But I mean, it's, <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's a challenge. It. I said I'd hesitate to, to call it that. But it's a challenging <laughs> environment, actually. It's industrial, isn't it? It's, it's, yes, it's Cornish uh, industry. But I mean, I enjoyed prowling around and finding mm. the scenes in the past and the present that I could use for the, for the book. I, mean, I, I wanted it to be somewhere that wasn't too glamorous, and, and that's one of the reasons, of 
course, because Capri is then a yes, nice of course, lovely counterpoint. counterpoint to that. And, mm -hmm. But what um, I really meant was, I mean, of course, you, you have to be in Cornwall for China Clay. It would have to be in that specific site. But, I mean, as Judy says, we, we, we spend much of our time down there. There is something of a sense of otherness about Cornwall, isn't there? I mean, it's not quite English. It's not quite British. It's, no, no, uh, indeed There not. is a, a definite <laughs> sense of separateness, don't you think? Very much so. Hmm. Um, no question about that. I mean, uh, England mm. is over the other side of the Tamar. Uh, and the China clay area has its own sense of otherness because of the, the colour of the China clay mm -hmm. and the way it creates this slightly yeah. lunar landscape yeah. in that area. And the, and the colour also of the particularly bright, almost cobalt blue lakes that are, uh, yes. Yes. That are created. Almost by tropical. The, yep. Um, but in fact, of course, they're only coloured by industrial waste. So there's this yeah. sort of irony about it. Sometimes you see something that looks very beautiful, but it's purely created mm. by the results of uh, a mining operation. It's toxic. But yeah. you make the point, don't you, forgive my ignorance, because I don't know much about China clay, if anything, but um, that actually um, this, the industry here, and part of the mystery is that it becomes, it moves across to America, it becomes incorporated into another company, uh, which still makes the most enormous amount of money out of yes. China clay. Right. China clay, it's, it's decaying rock, isn't it? Yes. Uh, it's just the particular chance that in certain areas of the world mm. uh, that kind of um, geology produces that kind of material. Yeah. Very useful material as it's turned yeah. out. Uh, but it's actually rotting rock, that's what it boils down to. Yes, but yeah. I suppose all... Decomposing all rock. I decomposing rock, well I suppose all mining operations are decomposing yeah, I rock. Suppose so. I suppose so. <laughs> just that, um, and it's, it's sort of interesting isn't it, you know, that the, the coal mining areas are sort of black and then we have China clay white yeah. so it's totally different yeah. and many of the villages um, are sort of coated in white dust mm. um, which is um, well it is richly atmospheric it's I'm not I'm thriller. not saying I fell in love with the central character Judy but uh, I certainly <laughs> became very fond of it was a maternal affection when he was 18 <laughs> absolutely um, it's it's a it's a absolute cracking book and if you like a lot of deaths <laughs> in your mysteries you'll, you'll get them here Robert Goddard and, and Faultline in the back of the book of course are all the usual extra bits that you get if you buy them from WH Smith uh, there's our question and answer sessions uh, with all the authors uh, there's details on how to download the the podcast stuff like this and uh, separate uh, material that we record um, and of course you can now get the book club app as of this year you simply uh, download the app to your smartphone you go into WH Smith you point it at the book of your choice the one you're thinking of buying in our in our collection and up Judy and I pop on the little screen of your phone um, talking to you and giving you a verbal review of uh, what uh, what delights await you inside the book they're all they're all great reads and this is right up there with the, the best of them congratulations Robert it's a lovely read well thank thanks you. very much thank you, thank you.